DAW organization. Here is the logic session that I have here, and this is a song we'll be working on throughout the video. We have some organization going on here already. Red, um, blue, purple, these different colors, and then we have some markers at the top. So let's quickly touch on, on these things. So the first thing is markers. I uh, always create markers at the top here. These are what markers are. Verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, bridge chorus, which is a standard structure of a song. In order to navigate to our markers, we go to this icon here and drop down. Here we have arrangement, marker, signature, tempo. These are data points to, to our song. And what I wanna reference here is the marker section. We can create markers wherever we want in our song. For example, I can do this from scratch if I just deleted that verse in this intro. How I would create a marker is going to the point where you want to create the marker with your cursor. Press the plus sign here and then double click in and name your marker, intro. By default, you'll get this kind of gray color. And to bring up the color box, we would press Option C on our keyboard. And this is brings up this color box. And then we can click on a marker and choose a color. For example, yellow. Let's say I think at bar five, I had a verse. So I bring my cursor there and type in another marker, verse one and I might choose a different color. So option C, and I'm gonna choose the same color as my verse two. So I'm gonna click on verse two, see what that color was. Cool, it's this color. So I'm gonna click on my verse one and click the same color. And then we can snap this up and we have the structure at the top. This is gonna help you in the long run when it comes to mixing and also just to quickly navigate to certain points of your song to have a listen to. We can go a level deeper and also create arrangement markers, signature markers, and tempo markers. Arrangement and signature are just ways, um, more ways to have your track organized. I rarely ever get into arrangement or signature markers. I think that's because the music that I'm producing doesn't really require me to have very sophisticated arrangements or time signatures. However, maybe you're doing orchestral music or you know screenplay writing, you might have bigger arrangements. You can use these arrangement markers where you'll get big blocks of markers. For example, maybe this is like act one or part one, and then I can use this whole section as a, I can, if I don't want that whole section, I can completely delete it or move the, move these sections around. So that can be helpful if you have bigger, let's say, um, pieces. Tempo is also something I don't change um, throughout my song very much because I'm usually just consistent to one tempo. However, in your songs, if you do have different tempos, let's say your chorus is a bit faster, we can kind of click a dot in here and then just bump up our tempo to 98. So you can see between the intro, verse, and pre, the click will be at 96 beats per minute and then coming in at 98 it will bump up two beats per minute so we'll see how that sounds so i'm going to go all back to 96 i just highlighted that and deleted it so i'm going to snap this up the next thing for dot organization is the tracks here on your left hand side you can click in on these icons here and change different pictures for your instrument. That is also helpful um, to quickly view them because if not, usually um, they're just, they look like this, all the tracks. If it's an audio track or if you add a Logic software instrument, it might add something uh, that looks like this. More importantly though, are the actual names of the tracks. So instead of just having some name that's not descriptive, name your tracks that um, that are descriptive. So double click in and, and name a track. The next thing would be let's organize these tracks for us to consume visually and then it would be also easier when we're when we start mixing. So what I mean by that is let's kind of move the important things right up, up at the top and then let's start grouping tracks together that are relevant. For example, let's start with the drums. Let's click the drums and drag them to the top. And this master track here does not necessarily need to be here. So what I can do is uh, right click and hide selected track. And that's just going to yeah hide it for us. If I want to um, see the hidden tracks, I can press H here and that will 
um, show you all the hidden tracks. Let's start with the drums here. So I'm gonna click the drums and drag them up to the top. Now we can start with some of the rest of the instruments. So we have a crash reverse sweep and a piano sweep. So do we have any other sweeps? We have this kind of snare hit, which is more like kind of effects transition as well. Vocal candy, guitar candy. I think these would be all more relevant, these tracks here. So I'm going to group these tracks together. How I can do this in a shortcut is shift command D. So I can go at the top here, track, create track stack, shift command D. It's gonna give me two options, a folder stack or a summing stack. So create a folder stack and you'll see what happens. It's snapped up everything into this folder here. So we can see our tracks are right here and it's snapped up into sub one. So we can call this, let's just say um, sweeps and transitions. And I can give this another maybe simple icon. So this is just now a folder. There's nothing we can do on this sweeps and transition track other than lower and raise the volume. Start grouping some other tracks. We have a synth track here, um, a pad synth, a main synth, chorus bass, and guitar. So I'm gonna definitely group the guitar. So shift command D, folder stack, guitars, Good. And then let's do synth, 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 synth. So let's do a synth group, synth, bass. We can group the basses. So now we have groups. And then we can color code these groups nicely. So let's do the base. Let's do option C. Let's do the synths. Option C. The guitars. Option C. We could have kept them as blue as well. It didn't really matter. Option C, and the drums will leave it at that color. So now we have, uh, uh, we're a little more organized in that way. We have a, a song structure, we have all our relevant tracks grouped together. And so this is gonna make it a lot easier for us to start mixing because we can mix groups at a time and then mix these groups together. If we want to get more organized than this, we can go level deeper and we can go into each track and actually start um, doing things like putting these tracks together. So if I, if I highlight all these tracks and do command J, now I've just putting this in one track, command J. So these are starting to look cleaner. It hasn't done anything to the performance, but I'm just starting to clean the track up. And we can go to our text tool at the top here. If I want to do my command tool, text, I can name actually the tracks a different name if I want to. But these are quite named well. These are named well already. So if I go to my next section, guitars, and I if I try to highlight this and do Command J, it's going to give me this non-continuous audio regions require the creation of a new audio file. And so this is just saying like um, because this main guitar is uh, an actual audio, this is me playing the guitar. It can't just quickly create that region for me as it would um, the other MIDI tracks. So I can just go and create a new audio track um, if I would like to, and this, this is what this would look like. So it's gonna bounce these regions in place and then just create a new full audio track for me. Well, the last little bit in section one where it comes to dot organization is creating project templates in Logic for your, for your work. Like every time you start a new project in Logic, you would go like file new. And yeah, let's close this. Actually, we won't close that just because we're kind of coming back to it. So don't close that. And here's what a new Logic project would look like, right? You're very familiar with this. It asks you what you want to start. Sure, let's create an audio track. And then this is what we get, a simple empty Logic window. And we kind of have to start 
everything from from scratch and that can be time consuming if we have uh, if we're working on projects that have a similar base foundation then we can create a project template and that will allow us to be more productive and start faster so i'll give you an example i have a project template i'm just going to shut this down don't save i'm going to open a project template um, open new from template so file new from template and i'm not going to close this again i'm just going to show you what a template of mine looks like one of my production templates so i have a songwriting session template and i also have a production template so i'm going to open that production template again i don't want to close our current session and here's what um, an example of a template could look like uh, for you or what i would recommend is making a template with um, set tracks that you are constantly starting with so if you're always using drums or bass or synth if you know you have certain atmosphere tracks you want to use i already have some tracks in there ready to go and I have built-in virtual instruments, for example, a bass and a synth ready for me just to kind of quickly um, get ideas down with my MIDI keyboard. I have a kick, a snare, and a crash ready for me to quickly open up the ste step sequencer here, and I can start making a, a beat really quickly here. I already have like some type of a quick beat going. So this is the idea of having templates down so you can quickly just start and you don't have to add tracks do things and you can get way more way more advanced with the templates you can see i already have a built-in structure at the top and i do have some routing I've, i have a drums bus here i have a reverb here uh, a small reverb a, a big reverb i have a drums bus so i have those routing um, buses set up really recommend for workflow and productivity to build project templates that are in line with the type of music you're making. Let's move on to section two of this video where we talk about recording, specifically recording audio like vocals and guitar and recording MIDI. Then we'll talk about a live loops and the step sequencer, which are two big updates that Logic made in their 10.5.1 update recently. And we'll talk about how you can use these as well.